first stop this morning is diesel. We've noticed the prices at the minute. I think here that we're at an intermarche where we're paying 185, but we have noticed it up to about um, two euros a litre in some of the service stations. So we've uh, dropped on with this one this morning. Give me to smile when I'm paying these prices. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Under two euros. Under two euros, goodness me. That's a lot of money. Obrigado. I'll okay. give you obrigado. <laughs> Over a hundred years ago, this small place was relatively unknown. Now it's one of the most visited Catholic shrines. In 1917, on the 13th of May, just over my right shoulder, the Virgin Mary appeared to three shepherd children from the local town. The Virgin Mary appeared to them every day on either the 12th or the 13th of the month from May until October. And on these dates, pilgrims from all over the world come here. And some of the ways they get here are on the four pilgrim routes, or the ways of Fatima. One of those routes, the northern route, follows exactly the same route as the Santiago de Compostela and even the signs and all the way markers are exactly the same. The shrines here and the churches are absolutely huge. It reminds me very much of the Vatican Square in Rome with the buildings that go all the way around and all the statues on top of the buildings. Clearly getting ready for Easter. They've got all the scaffolding up and all the um, barriers here, which is only in uh, about a week and a so's time. And over there is the shrine to where the three children saw the apparition of Mary. Wherever we go in the world and whatever churches we visit, I always like to light a candle. And so I've got the candles now and I'm going to go and light them for our family that we've lost over the last few years. I'm not sure if you can see over my shoulder, but the last part of the pilgrimage that people make here is on the white marble on the way down behind me and there are people making the, um, the last part of the pilgrimage on the knees and that's the tradition here.
enjoyable morning at uh, Fatima. We're now on our way to our campsite or our quirky park up for the weekend. Good morning from a very sunny Portugal. The sun's shining, it's a Sunday morning and we're going to go out on a walk. We're going out to show you some of rural Portugal. It's not beaches, it's not mountains, it's countryside where the locals live. And this is what we've woken up to this morning. This is Terra de Iguana. This is the little camping place that we've been staying at all weekend. You're looking forward to this this morning? I am. I think I've died and gone to heaven. Look at this. It's the totally Garden of Eden. I know. Isn't it? I've just done a little bit of a tour around, but uh, it's beautiful. It's, uh... it's so peaceful, so quiet. You get woken up by the birds, and last night the crickets were giving it some yee haw, weren't they? Last yeah, night they it was that noise. That was the most noise that you hear is the cricket and the birds. It's so, really, right? really a lovely place. What I love about camping, you know, is, is that um, I was looking on, there was an article last night on Facebook about people nailing the colours to the mast of one kind of camping over another, and that's fine. It's each to their own. And, uh, and I really support that, but I like the diversity of it. Mm, I agree. So I like the fact that sometimes we're in a place like this, sometimes we're in a car park and it maybe doesn't look that scenic, but it's functional, it's where we need to be. And I like the, uh, the special occasions when you go on a concierge camping type yeah. site where there's all things laid on for you and there's quality there. But this, if it was really pushed, this sort of more bohemian, less regulated, rustic sort of site, uh, chickens, yeah. <laughs> uh, fresh bread to your door, yeah, yeah. with a little bit of an international flavour to it. Yes. Belgians here, Dutch, Dutch. have been here. Yeah. And we can't quite count whether it's Belgian or Dutch owned, but it's not Portuguese owned. So yeah. we, we do know that. But it's a belting place and the colours and the smells. and yeah. I'm just really, um, they don't get it better than this one. It's way. brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, Loved yes. it. Loved it up to now. Get up. So get locked up and let's go. That's the first checkpoint on our map given to yeah. us by the owner of the camping place and it's the local cemetery which I know sounds a little bit morbid but the the way these are kept and the people there on a Sunday morning tending to the flowers, the graves it's just in some bizarre way quite beautiful and the smell of the flowers and the pictures of the people they do um, memorialise the dead very well in, uh, we've seen that in both Spain and Portugal I hope you can see this. We're at the. Um, this is the route we're taking today. We're at St. João de Arias. I hope I've said that right. And that's the route that we're going to take. It's about a 10k walk um, around all the, some of the local villages. Today is local market day. Even though it's a Sunday, it's Palm Sunday. And we're in the village, there's a market set up across there. Different things here. There's a treble cleft there from. So there's obviously some musical connection. But Martin's attention was just drawn. So I have to say, the very nice um, VW that's parked up there. It's very shiny, VW Beetle. This is a local Portuguese washing area. There's one in every village. And you come down here and bring all your clothes that need washing. There's a fresh water supply and three different areas where you can do the washing. And this is sort of now making me really quite glad that there's a washing machine and dryer on the site. The signs that you come on in your journey, I don't get much better than this, pizzeria. Okay. 
so we have salmon and mozzarella and basil pizza and it looks fantastic what does it taste like it's pretty good actually so we're very happy now we're full and we're on our way back to the campsite now where we're going to get the camp chairs out what are you doing with that pizza that's for, for later. Is that, a, is that a good intention pizza? It's a good intention pizza. Because I don't know how on earth you're going to eat any more pizza, oh, no, frankly. Not, maybe not today. Yeah. Goodness me. It's a good job we haven't got a microwave in our van. It is, yeah. Good morning. I hope you can hear me above the rain. That rain somewhat stopped play today. And it isn't even that fine rain that soaks you through. It's that straight down rain. Even the dog's given up today. She's staying in bed. Happy. What about more coffee? Would that make you feel happier? Uh, it's a step in the right direction. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's a step yeah. in the right direction. So, editing, editing today? Editing, reading, and we are reading the Temple book today. Okay. I got from the castle at Tom Mark. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A little not bit happy. of. No. Dog's not happy. Dog's, Dog's not, not happy. going out. No, she's, she's, she, won't, she doesn't like rain at the best of times, so she's not going anywhere. She's entered the cast iron body mode. Yeah. <laughs> She's not going out for a week. No, I'm going to put the kettle on and then I'm going to read my book. Yeah. It is what it is. 